Well, cheers, y'all. How are you doing? I hope y'all are having a good day. I'm hanging in there. Got some things going on here. But let's just have a drink for now and not worry about that. <laughs> anyway, so I'm just recently revisiting the Mountain Maid from uh, White Mule Distillery. And I, I have three shots or three ounces on the rock, as it were, one big ice cube. Why three ounces, you ask? Well, I've got this Jameson glass I really like. I don't know if you can see that measurement on the back. It says an ounce and a half. This is a true jigger shot. I mean, way back when they used to say jigger was an ounce and a half, now they say it's an ounce and a quarter. I don't know, man. I think it's like a six, uh, a pound of bacon is now 12 ounces. I think somebody's trying to screw me. <laughs> anyway, that's my personal opinion. So anyways, if you've been watching me, you know I've been working through stuff and finishing stuff off, but, and I wasn't going to buy anything new until our situation got settled, but I don't know, it's kind of in the mood today, I just wanted to have some of this stuff. It's kind of a comfort whiskey for me, I guess. It was hot, man, and I don't know, I, I, as much as I love bourbons and, and aged whiskeys, uh, and, and, and to be honest with you, for a long time, I really hated unaged whiskey, and although this isn't completely unaged. Um, there's something about this one that's special to me. What's unique about it, I don't know unique is the right word, maybe different. What's different about it is is the bill is 80% corn, 15% wheat, 5% barley. That's not different. But what is different is they smoke the corn. So where a lot of products like this have that kind of corn aroma that you get. This when you get that that nice hickory smoke, the hickory smoke, that corn, which gives it a another dimension. And that and the fact that uh, Gary at, at a White Mule Distillery has one of the best water sources available and he, he just makes this beautiful, crisp, clean, crisp, clean tasting whiskey. That's just amazing. It is my absolute favorite of all the unaged whiskeys that I've had. In my opinion, this one is second to none. It is certainly worth trying. And and the best part about it is it's only, I mean, I, I purchased it today at a liquor store for only $26 a bottle. Now, when you consider there's a lot of, in my opinion, lesser quality uh, unaged whiskeys for $28, $29, 30 and, uh, and up. Here I've got this, I mean, unique whiskey with the smoked corn added, and where a lot of them are, are you know, using a lot of sugar. Here I've got 80% corn, 15% wheat, 5% barley. A lot of them use that sugar, sugar shiny kind of thing. Oh, God. That's just good. You know, I never thought, to be honest with you, I, I tried for a lot of years to get used to NH whiskeys. Uh, some I thought were okay. I, I've kind of, there's a few that I think are better than others. I really like uh, the uh, Crown Valley malt whiskey. I really like the uh, uh, Rocktown Arkansas Lightning. But this one is just a whole other animal. Again, it's that smoked corn that really goes, oh, I like it. Uh, because even though it's an ace, I still got that, that smokiness that permeates every drink. And although I'm sure that the guys at, at uh, White Mule and Gary, the owner out there, would prefer I drink this neat, I just, I mean, it, it's like an 80-something degree out there. And, and, and although it is 80 proof, I say only 80 proof, it's just a whiskey that tastes good cold to me. I tend to only want to dilute anything 100 or above, you know what I mean? Uh, but I, and I'm not going to let this one sit long. I'm going to drink it rather quick. But I did want it cold, so they, they read you a little bit from the back of their bottle here. Mountain Made Corn Whiskey, named after a legend, crafted in a holler. And they're not kidding, man. <laughs> they ain't kidding. And kissed by fire. We smoke this... We smoke the finest Ozark grains in our hickory bifocals. Trying to get the bifocals to work out with my allergy eyes. We smoke the finest Ozark grains <laughs> over hickory 
uh, over hickory fires before mashing them and distilling in small batches. We give our spirits a final polish in handmade hickory charcoal, resorting, uh, I'm sorry, resulting in some of the smoothest corn whiskey that ever came out of it. Now, they say the smoothest corn whiskey that ever came, came out of the Ozarks. No, 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 no. That's an understatement. They're doing some of the smoothest corn whiskey ever made, period. Distilled and bottled by White Mule Distillery in Purdy, Missouri. We are a veteran-owned small business in Missouri. I was like, yes, they are. Gary out there is an amazing guy. He's got a great story. I encourage everybody I run across to visit out there and go see Gary and at White Mule. Got a distiller out there, Mark. That's a character as well. And those guys are awesome. They treated me so well when I was out there. So anyway, uh, it, it, it is a little sweet, but not in a cloying way. Some corn whiskeys can give you that, that kind of alcohol burn, sweetness. What Gary does different out there, I'm, and I'm trying to remember everything he told me when I did visit a while back, is, is that where a lot of whiskeys will they'll, 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 they'll barrel at 150 proof, 150 to 160, he barrels at only 105. It doesn't give him as big a yield, but it gives him a smoother cleaning whiskey. A smoother, smoother, cleaner whiskey is what I meant to say. And that's why this thing bottled at 80. I would love to try this at 105, to be honest with you. At barrel strength. I would love to try this product at barrel strength because I think it is that good. Oh, mercy, mercy. So there you go. Hey, I am trying to be a whisperer. I am, I, you know, I've been doing some music today. Uh, I recently came across some of Seamus's old discs while we're in a situation where I'm having to uh, clean stuff up around here and deal with Seamus's stuff that we just haven't dealt with in a while. It's been difficult. My wife hasn't been able to, uh, still can't go into Seamus's room. I've been in there three times in four years. Well, more than that, actually. But up until recently, it only been three times in four years. I had to go in there more recently to get his stuff packed up. But anyway, I found some of his discs. Some of them he burned himself. Some we had. But one of his, what you might think is one of mine, is actually a uh, Judas Priest British still. And we just we listened to. Uh, uh, I, I was going to introduce a song, and I just kept talking. Uh, you know, breaking the law, and now it's Metal Gods, and they were awesome. It was a great band. The interesting thing about Judas Priest is, is sometimes the metal community, especially nouveau metal, is very homophobic, yet a lot of them will still look up to Judas Priest for what they've done. And the, the odd thing, I remember hearing, hearing Rob, Rob Halford tell a story about how they crafted their look, you know, because there wasn't really a look back then. So he went to fetish shops, bought this leather stuff, they all dressed in the leather. That became the metal look for almost every metal band that went forward for a long time. Uh, you, you know, now we, you know, of course, we all know now that Rob Halford is gay. <laughs> so they're all dressed like they're dressed. It, it just cracks me up. The, the irony, the irony, it's brimming with irony, as they say. I just wonder, I, I, I'm curious if some of those folks that admired Rob back then before they knew he was gay still admire it. They should. It should matter. But there, there still is a lot of homophobia in the metal community, and that is sad. Still a lot of homophobia in every community, which is sad. I mean, America is a freaking joke. Yeah, folks that claim to be Christians and wonderful people that are as homophobic as they come. It's really, that you not really, I think we're sometimes I think we're reading separate books, man. But anyways, uh, I didn't want to get into homophobia while talking about the mountain peak because this one day has nothing to do with the other. But I just wanted to mention talking about uh, Judas Priest. Seamus like Priest. But anyways, back to the whiskey. Yeah, if you get a chance, you need to get out there. Uh, they're, they're, they're very nice guys. Uh, they're open most of the time, but they, they do uh, advise that you check their website or give them a call or something, a heads up, uh, the, just to make sure somebody is out there. Uh, I was, I've been out there twice. First time, Gary, the owner, wasn't there. He, had, he was doing something else. But the second time, I called ahead to make sure he was there, and he gave me a great personal tour of... It, it, 
I, I'm, you know, I don't know. I, I honestly can't say enough good things about that particular operation. And not, not only the people, uh, not only the products, but the people. I mean, everything about that place is wonderful, in my opinion. I mean, I'd rather pay 26 bucks for a product like this for a small family operation than, 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 than pay 20 to th that goes to a conglomerate that doesn't give a rat's ass about quality anymore. And here I've got people that actually care about what they do. So the extra five bucks, yeah, I'm going to pay it. That's my personal opinion. I'd rather drink less and drink better than, than drink more and have it go to, you know, some faceless corporation. That's just my personal opinion. <laughs> there you go. Hey, I'm Tom the Whiskey Whisperer tonight, man. Um... Uh, Whiskey evangelist, prolific whiskey drinker, purveyor of wisdom, and all ragged guy. Boom.